Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Pager Duty Summit 22. Lisa Martin with you here on the ground. I've got one of our alumni back with me. Sean Scott joins me, the Chief Product Officer at Pager Duty. It's great to have you here in person. Super great to be here in person. Isn't it nice? Quite a change, quite a change. It is a change. We were talking before we went, went live about it. That's that readjustment to actually being with another human, but it's a good readjustment to have. Uh, awesome readjustment. I've been traveling more and more in the past, past few weeks and just being in the offices, seeing the people, the energy we get is uh, the smiles. It's 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 amazing. So yeah, it's so me, much better than just sitting at your home and oh, I couldn't agree more. For me, it's the energy and and the CEO of DocuSign talked about that with Jennifer during her fireside chat this morning. I thought, yes, finally someone like me who doesn't like working from home. But as one of the things that you talked about in your keynote this morning was the the ways traditionally that we've been working are no longer working. Talk to me about the future of work. What does it look like from PagerDuty's lens? Sure. So there's a, f a few things. If we just take a step back and think about, you know, what your day looks like from, you know, all the different Slack, Slacks, you know, chats, emails, you have your dashboards, you have more Slacks coming in, you have more emails coming in, more chat. And so just when you start the day off, you think you know what you're doing and then it kind of blows up out of the out of the gate. And so what we're all about is really trying to revolutionize operations. So how do you help make sense of all the chaos that's happening? And how do you make it simpler so you can get back to doing the more meaningful work and leave the, the tedium to the machines and just automate? That would be critical. You know, one of the things that, such, such an interesting dynamic two years that we've had, obviously here we are in, in San Francisco, a virtual event this year, but we've, there's so many problems out there that the customer landscape's dealing with the great resignation. The sure. data deluge, there's just data coming in everywhere. And we have this expectation when we're on the consumer side that we're going to be, that, that a business will know us and have enough context to make us the, the next best offer that actually makes sense. But now what we're seeing is like the great resignation and the data overload is really creating for many organizations this operational complexity that's now a problem really amorphously across the organization. It's no longer something that, that the back office has to deal with or just the front office. It's really across. Yeah, that's right. So you think about um, just the customer's experience. Their expectations are higher than ever. I think you know there's been a lot of great consumer products that have taught the world what good looks like. You know, um, and I came from a consumer background and, you know, we measured the customer experience in milliseconds. And so when customers talking about minutes or hours of outages, customers are thinking in milliseconds. So that's the disconnect. And so, you know, you have to be focused at that level and have everybody in your organization focused, uh, thinking about milliseconds of customer experience, not seconds, minutes, hours. If that's where you're at, then you're losing customers. And then you think about, you mentioned the great resignation. Well, what does that mean for a given team or organization? That means lost institutional knowledge. So if you have the experts and they leave, now who's the experts? And do you have the processes and the tools and the run books to make sure that nothing falls on the ground? Probably not. You know, most of the people that we talk to, you know, they're trying to figure it out as they go and they're getting better, but there's a lot of institutional knowledge that goes out the door when people leave. And so part of our solution is also around our run book automation and our process automation. And some of our announcements today uh, really help address that problem to keep the business running, keep the operations running, keep everything kind of moving and the customers happy ultimately and keep your business going where it needs to go. That customer experience is critical for organizations in every industry these days because we don't, to your point, we will tolerate milliseconds, but that's about it. Talk to me about, you did this great keynote this morning that I had a chance to, to watch and you talked about how PagerDuty is revolutionizing operations. And I thought, I want you to be able to break that down for this audience who may not sure. have heard that. What are those four tenants of revolutionizing operations that PagerDuty is delivering to orgs? Yeah, sure, so it starts with the data. So you mentioned the, the data deluge that's, that's happening happening to everybody, right? And so we actually do, we integrate with over 650 systems uh, to bring all that data in. So if you have an API uh, or webhook, you can actually integrate with PagerDuty and push this data into PagerDuty. And so that's where, that's where it starts, is these, uh, all these integrations. And it's everything from your, uh, from a developer perspective, your CI CD pipelines, your code repositories, uh, from IT, we have you know, those systems are instrumented as well. Even you know, marketing, uh, more tech stacks, we can actually instrument and pull data in. Uh, the next step is now we have all this data, how do we make sense of it? So we think we have machine learning algorithms that really help you focus your attention and kind of point you to the really relevant work. Part of that is also noise suppression. So we, our algorithms can suppress noise, about 98% of the noise can just 
you know, be eliminated. And that helps you really focus where you need to spend your time. Because if you think about human time and attention, it's pretty expensive. <laughs> and it's, you know, probably one of your most com your company's most precious resources is that human time. And so you want the humans doing the really meaningful work. Next step is automation, which is, okay, we want the humans doing the special work. So what's the tedium? What's the toil that we can get rid of and push that to the machines? Because machines are really good at doing, you know, very easy, repetitive tasks. And there's a lot of them that we do uh, day in, day out. The next step is just orchestrating the work and putting, getting everybody in the organization on the same page. And that's where uh, this morning I talked about our customer service operations product. And so the customer service is on the front lines. And they're often getting signals from actual customers that you know, nobody else in the organization may not even be aware of yet. So uh, you know, I, had a, I was running a system uh, before and uh, all our metrics look good. And you get a customer feedback saying, this isn't working for me. And you go look at the metrics and your dashboards and all looks good. And then you go back and talk to the customer some more and they're like, no, it's still not working. And you go back to your data, you're back to your dashboards, back to your metrics. And sure enough, we had an instrumentation issue. But the customer was giving us that feedback. And so customer service is really on the front lines. And they're often the kind of the unsung heroes for your customers. Uh, but they're actually, you know, kind of really helping and make sure that everything, the right signals are coming to the dev team, to the owners that own it. Uh, and even in the case when you think you have everything instrumented, you may be missing something. And that's where they can really help. But our customer service operations product really helps bring everybody on the same page. And then as the development teams and the IT teams and the SRA has pushed information back to customer service, then they're equipped, empowered to go tell the customer, okay, we know about the issue, thank you. Uh, you know, we should have it up in the next 30 minutes or whatever it is, five minutes, hopefully it's faster than, than longer, right. uh, but they can inform the customer. So to help that customer experience, as opposed to the customer saying, eh, I'm just going to go shop somewhere else, or I'm going to go buy somewhere else or do something else. And the last part is really around how do we, uh, really enable our customers with the best practices. So those million users, the 21,000 companies and organizations we're working with, we've learned a lot around what good looks like. And so we've really embedded that back into our product in uh, terms of our service standards, which is really helps SREs and developers set quality standards for how services should be implemented uh, at their company. And then they can actually monitor and track across all their teams what's the quality of the services in this team against different teams in their organization uh, and really raise the quality of the overall system. So for, for businesses, and like I mentioned, um, DocuSign was on this morning. Uh, I know some great brand customers that you guys have seen on the website, Peloton, Slack, a couple that popped out to me. Um, when, when you're able to work with a customer to help them revolutionize operations, what are some of the business impacts? Because some of the things that, that jump out to me would be like reduction in churn, um, retention rate, or some of those things that are really overall impactful to the revenue of a business. Absolutely, and so there's a couple different parts of it. One is, you know, all the work, kind of what PageDuty is known for is orchestrating the work for a service outage or a website outage. And so that's actually easy to measure because you can measure your revenue that's coming in or missed revenue uh, and how much we've shortened that. So that's the, I guess that's our kind of the history and our, our you know, legacy. Uh, but now we've moved into a lot of the cost side as well. So, uh, you know, helping customers really understand from an outage perspective, where to focus our time, as opposed to just orchestrating the work. Well, now we can say, we think we have a new feature we launched um, last year called Probable Origin. So when you have an outage, we can actually narrow in where we think the outage and just give you a few clues of, you know, this looks anomalous, for example. So let's start here. So that's still focused on the top line. And then from an automation perspective, there's lots and lots of just toil and noise uh, that people are dealing with on a day in, day out basis. And then some of it's easy work, some of it's harder work. Um, one of the ones I really like is our automatic diagnostics. So if you have an incident, you know, one of the first things you have to do is you have to go gather telemetry of what's actually happening on the servers to say, is the CPU look good? Does the memory look good? Does the disk look good? Does the network look good? And that's all perfect work for automation. And so we can run our automatic diagnostics and have all that data pumped directly into the incident. So when the responder engages, it's all right there waiting for them. And they don't have to go do all that basic task of getting data, cutting and pasting into the incident. Uh, or if you're using one of those old ticketing systems, uh, cutting and pasting into a, a ticketing system, it's all right there waiting for you. And that's, you know, on average 15 minutes during an outage of time that's, that's saved. And the nice thing about that is that can all be kicked off at time zero. So you can actually call from our event orchestration product, you can call directly into automation actions 
uh, right there when that event first comes in. So you think about there's a warning for a CPU and instantly it kicks off this diagnostics and then within you know, seconds or even minutes, it's in the incident waiting for you to take action. One of the things that you also shared this morning that I loved was, was one of the stats around um, uh, customer sale point that they had 60 different alerts coming in and PagerDuty was able to reduce that to one alert. So 60x reduction in alerts, getting rid of a lot of noise, allowing them to focus on really those probably key high escalations that are going to make the biggest impact to their customers and to their business. That's right. You think about, you know, you have a high severity incident, like they actually had a database failure. And so when you're in the heat of the moment, and you start getting these alerts, you're trying to figure out, is that one incident? Is it 10 incidents? Is it 100, inc 100 incidents that I'm having to deal with? And you probably have a good feeling like there's, I know it's probably this thing, but you're not quite sure. And so with our machine learning, we're able to eliminate a lot of the noise. And in this case, it was you know going from 60 alerts down to one, just to let you know this is the actual incident. Uh, but then also to focus your attention on where we think may be the cause. And you think about all the different teams that you know, historically have been had to pull in for a large scale incident, you know, we can quickly narrow in to the root cause and just get the right people involved. So we don't have, you know, these conference bridges of 100 people on which, you know, you hear about, you know, when these large scale outages happen that everyone's on a call across the entire company. And, uh, and it's not just the dev teams and IT teams, you have PR, you have legal, oh, yeah. you have everybody's involved in these. And so the more that we can you know, orchestrate their work and get smarter about, you know, using machine learning and some of these other technologies, then the more efficient it is for our customers and ultimately the better it is for their customers. Right. And hopefully, you know, PR, HR, legal doesn't have to be some of those uh, incident response leaders that right now exactly. we're seeing across the organization. Exactly. Exactly. So when you're talking with customers and, and some of the things that you announced, you mentioned automated actions, incident workflows. Uh, what are you hearing from the voice of the customer as the chief product officer? And what influence did that have in terms of this year's vision for the PagerDuty Summit? Sure, yeah, we listen to uh, our customers all the time. It's one of our leadership principles and really trying to hear their feedback. And it was interesting, uh, I got sent some of the, the chat threads during the, uh, the keynote afterwards and uh, there was a lot of excitement about the products we announced. So the first one is incident workflows. And this is really, um, it's a no-code workflow based on uh, our recent acquisition of a company called Catalytic. And what it does is it's, you can think of it as kind of our next generation of response plays. So you can actually go in and, and build a workflow using no-code tooling uh, to say when this incident happens or this type of incident happens, here's what that process looks like. And so back to your original comment around the great resignation, that lost institutional knowledge, well now you're building all this into your processes through your incident response. And so I think the incident workflows, you know, if you want to create a, you know, incident specific Slack channel or a, you know, an incident specific Zoom bridge, um, or even just send status updates, all that is right there for you. And you can use our out of the box orchestrations or you can define your own. Because we have, you know, back to the, our customer list, we have, you know, some of the biggest companies in the world, you know, as customers. And uh, we have a very opinionated product. And so if you're new to the whole DevOps and full service ownership, we help you through that. But then, you know, a lot of our companies are evolving along that continuum, the operational maturity model continuum. Uh, and at the other end, we have customers that say, this is great, but we want to extend it. We want to like call this person or send this or update this system here. And, uh, and so that's where the incident workflows is really powerful. And it lets, lets our customers just tailor it to their processes uh, and really extend it for them. And that's GA later this year? Later this year, yes. Yeah, so we'll start EAing. Um, probably the next few months, and then uh, GA later this year. Got it. Last question as we're almost out of time here. What are some of the things that, as, as you talk to customers day in and day out, as you see, you saw the, the chats from this morning's live keynote, the excitement, the trust that PagerDuty is building with its customers, its partners, et cetera, what, what excites you about the future? Yeah, so it's really why I came to PagerDuty. I've been here about a year and a half now, but revolutionizing operations, that's a big, that's a big statement, uh, and I think we need it. I think the, you know, as I think Jennifer said in her keynote today, work is broken, and I think you know our data. We surveyed our customers earlier this year, and 42% of the respondents were working more hours in 2021 compared to 2020. And I don't think anyone you know goes home and if I could only work more hours. I think there's some, uh, and if I could only do more of this like tedium, the tedium work, <laughs> right. the toil. If I could only do more of that, I think life would be so good. <laughs> You know, we don't hear that. We don't hear yeah. that a lot. We hear about there's a lot of noise, 
you know, we have, you know, a massive attrition that every company does. Uh, that's the type of feedback that we get. And so we're really, uh, that's what gets me excited about, you know, the tools that we're building, the, and especially when I think just seeing the chat, even this morning about some of the announcements, it shows we've been listening and it shows the excitement in our customers when they're, uh, you know, lots of, you know, I'm gonna use this tool or that tool, I can just use PagerDuty, which, was, which is awesome. The momentum is, is clear and it's palpable, and uh, I loved being a part of that. Thank you so much, Sean, for joining me on the Cube this afternoon, talking about what's new, what's exciting, and how you guys are fixing work that's broken that validated me thinking that work was broken. So thank you. Happy to be here, and thanks for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. For Sean Scott, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching the Cube's coverage of PagerDuty Summit 22 on the ground from San Francisco.